to the reason that we're doing this panel discussion, guys, is one of the things that we want to talk about, we're talking about, you know, this show for 15, almost 16 years now, we've been talking to the CEOs of emerging companies, companies that are, you know, hopefully the next greatest thing that we're going to see down the line. We have interviewed more than 3,000 companies on this show during that period of time. But one thing that a lot of these companies have in common is they seem at some time or another to be victimized by what we call short sellers. And, and um, you know, if we were um, uh, older moms in New York, we would say short sellers and would spit on the floor. <laughs> but um, there are a lot of tactics that these, uh, I'll just say bad people, use to try to achieve their ill-gotten gain. Uh, some of them happen with the internet, uh, internet stock chat rooms, internet stock message boards. Uh, Brian, I know this is of uh, particular interest to you. Uh, what are companies doing to try to combat this kind of thing? Well, you know, Don, I, I think that part of the part of the issue for early stage companies and micro cap companies is, you know, first of all, you have a limited amount of resources, and the the challenge is how do you how do you get out and promote your company? You know, when you when you're an early stage company and a public company, you really have two products that you're selling. You have the product that you're selling to your industry, and then you have you have your company that you're selling. And and the way that you get access to capital is, you know, you, you utilize the capital markets, and the way you communicate is you try to broadly promote your company and your capabilities. Uh, and you, you know, we use, I know we use Money TV a lot. It gives a great, I think it's a great avenue because shareholders get to see CEOs' faces, get to hear them answer questions. There's a very personal touch there, it's, as Dean's been talking about, giving, you know, giving an open house. You want to give your shareholders a touch and feel. The problem is that, you know, when that, when that goes out to the internet, you know, internet message boards and, and, and inter the internet allows people to respond anonymously and they can say anything they want about companies. Right. And the challenge is, you know, how do you, how how do you get out and, and promote the company and, and, and broaden the exposure and you know not have to deal with uh, with those kinds of those kinds of attacks? And you really can't even I know we talk about this all the time. Oh, I know, right? Well, they come and they'll they'll bash or make up lies, and you can't really. I mean, your hands are tied as a CEO of a public reported company. You want to be transparent. Right. You want to provide as much detail so your investor shareholder base that you're you know trying to present your your company story to can do their due diligence. And it's frustrating when an anonymous person can go out and post all sorts of crazy lies. You know, I mean, they, they, they get away with, you know, almost the opposite of what we have to do. You know, they don't have to report to the SEC right. when, they, when they put something yeah. out there. But, that, but that's very important. I mean, yeah. Dean mentioned due, di uh, due, due diligence, and that's very important for investors is they really yeah. need to. I mean, it, you, know, it, 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 you know, surfing these boards, reading what people have to say, that's fine. I, it's a, it, in my opinion, it's entertainment. There's really no fact there. But the bottom line is if you're going to read it, you should definitely take the time to read what the company files mm -hmm. because there's a lot of detail in there. And, and, uh, and you, you guys have probably all experienced this. We routinely get phone calls and emails asking us questions that have been clearly mm -hmm. either answered or, or made statements that clearly state exactly what's going on and yet people are obviously taking their key from a message board from some anonymous poster rather than reading the filings or paying attention to other companies in the sector, which I think is very important. Not just the company you're invested in or potentially about to invest in, but take a look at other entities in that sector too and get to know the sector well. And I don't think investors are doing that enough. Well, I think it's important for people watching the program to realize that if you're <clears throat> someone's interested in driving a price of a stock down or a company stock price down, you're going to employ a lot of methods. Uh -huh, sure. And you're going to actually employ these people who are in the stock message boards, these anonymous people, uh, to create all kinds of false information trying to create panic selling. Uh -huh. right. If they can create panic selling drives the price down, that accomplishes exactly what the short seller is trying to do. Well, it's even more than that. What the short sellers, uh, there's two kinds of short sellers. There's short sellers that are flippers. In other words, we, we, we find situations where the stock is trading very strong volumes and all of a sudden somebody will go out and place an order, what we believe to be a naked short order, for 100 shares of stock where the printing of the ticket is clearly more than the value of the trade. And then the lay investor all of a sudden sees, oh my gosh, this stock is going down 20%, I should sell. And then that same person through another broker, in a, or even worse, in an account in the same brokerage, and we've actually filed an 8K calling this to the attention of uh, one particular brokerage and FINRA and the SEC. In that same transaction, they will have the catcher's mitt out 
on the other end. So as people are panic selling, they will be buying and selling at the price of the open during that particular day. So it's not even that they're trying to drive the price down because they're a short seller because on a penny stock it there's not a lot of margin there's not a lot of room unless you're just doing it with a lot of companies and a lot of shares but what they're trying to do is panic people into selling right. on false information or actually false bids on right. uh, naked shorts in order so that they can buy cheap and sell it high and and the and one of the observations that i think is that it's not so much the few of the people who do that that are the real problem. Because there's a lot of good people who care about the companies and their investment who read and follow these boards. But it's the, the giant institutional management at places like Yahoo Finance who could care less. Right. Doesn't matter what's said. It could be vulgar. It could be a abusive, it could be slanderous, and all these people do is aid and abet these people so they can manipulate stocks and take advantage of companies and take advantage of individuals at the expense of Yahoo Finance. Yeah, and agree. that's it, what's frustrating. It, it is to a degree a disservice. At the same time that it is a service and has some positive as aspects, mm -hmm. the fact that they don't police it at all and they let the degree of anonymity occur, it really is a disservice, I think, to the broader, uh, you know, especially penny stock market. Let me hold that thought right now. They're screaming at me. They've got to take a break. We'll be right back with more of this fascinating discussion. Stay with us.